you do, you do, man. Welcome back, City Crypto Fam. It's your favorite co host here, David, coming at you live from Global Studios in Sin City, Nevada, with another deep dive episode into one of the most amazingly promising projects you will ever hear about if you haven't. So make sure you watch the video. Before we get into the content, real quick, we are not financial advisors. Don't take anything we say as financial advice, especially from Robin, because he's really, really bad at it. Without further ado, let's meet the man, the legend, Big Rob. What's up? Hola! It's your boy, Big Rob, here with life advice, because I'm not a financial advisor, but I know, and I've been through some stuff. Now, for your first time checking us out, welcome to the channel, we're entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel, where we take the old, the boring, and the stale information, we package it up in a fun and sexy way. Also, if it's your first time checking us out, we not only do deep dives, we do live streams. This is the deep dive, though. Check out the live streams live, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Am. If you do me a favor, if you like the channel, if you like the video, like the video. If you like my personality, who I am, but don't like David, subscribe to the channel. And not to miss any future content, hit the notification bell. David, what we got today, You're baby? You're an absolute hater. You're a fucking hater. Anyways, today we are taking an extremely deep dive into arguably a project that can change the entire landscape of cryptocurrency. V Chain. V Chain is an enterprise grade blockchain platform built to support both private and mass market decentralized application, also known as DApps. V Chain was founded by uh, co founded by Sunny Liu, who also serves as their CEO. Sunny Liu attended the university in Shanghai, China, where he majored in electronics and communications engineering. He, ser he has served as IT executive in Fortune 500 companies for nearly 20 years. So he understands the big business landscape. He understands what it takes to succeed in it. That's why he's the head man of VeChain. Now, VeChain was founded in early 2017. Getting into some utility here. VeChain was created to mainly serve enterprises and businesses. Their goal is to connect blockchain to the real world enterprises and businesses that are currently out there today. So your Amazon, Google, Apple, Tesla, they're essentially catering their blockchain and their utility to those big businesses. And you I'll don't tell sound you, very excited about this. Oh man, this is absolutely amazing. All right. We talk about bridging the gap between big Ooh. business to blockchain. VeChain is going to be the one to do it. Uh, VeChain is built on the VeChain Thor blockchain, which uses the proof of authority consensus. Ooh, now, what, what's that? Authority. Now, you've heard of proof of work. You've heard of proof of stake. You heard of proof of Robin being a dumbass. But have you Hold heard on. of proof of authority? If you haven't, I'm going to tell you what it is. Proof of authority is a type of consensus mechanism geared towards enterprises or private organizations who want to build their own chains that are essentially closed in nature so they're not open source and they don't require participation from general users. Users known and uses known and reputable validators to secure the network. Validators have to submit KYC and be approved to secure the network. So you don't have random nodes, random validators. These are people that have to go through KYC. They have to know who you are. Are you reputable? If you are, then you're oh, able no, to... Hold on, what's KYC? Is that kind of like KFC, my no, dude? No, KYC is know your customer. Oh, I thought you was going to take a fried chicken, uh, my How dude. am I on a YouTube channel with you on crypto? Now, VeChain Toolchain is a robust blockchain application platform that features a variety of solutions. Let's get into some of these solutions. They are extremely exciting, and it's going to change the landscape of the world. First, food safety traceability. Safety is a hot topic, especially nowadays with the coronavirus. You want to know where your food's coming from, who's touched your food, who hasn't touched your food. Hopefully, Robin has not touched your food because he's absolutely disgusting. You should see the way he uh, eats chips. Real quick, let me just get into the food. First of all, I don't appreciate the comments towards myself, uh, but a little bit about what, what this means to me. I am a big and avid collector of fine wines, and let me tell you something. If you don't know anything about fine wine, there is a huge counterfeit market, uh, and what wine is extremely volatile as far as it can be damaged due to improper storage. Uh, so what VeChain can do, something that's what I'm really excited about, is that it can trace and track where the product goes from from where from the producer from the winemaker for an example uh it keeps track of the temperature as it goes through the supply chain uh and then you can see where and 
what hands it changed into. Also, like, so I was saying with the temperature, you can add a temperature control reader on there, which will tell you throughout the entire stage of its transportation at what time and what temperature it was at every point throughout this transition. So uh, one of the cool features, and you can apply that to kind of everything as well, not just the wine, to anything else. You can add a Rolexes too, just to authenticate those. So really cool stuff. What you got, David? I am extremely impressed that you kept your train of thought because I was over here making a fool of myself, trying to make you laugh, but you did it. Now, to touch on what Robin said, to go a little more in depth, <clears throat> their food safety traceability inside the VeChain ThorChain platform, it provides food industry enterprises with various traceability functions that have been effectively verified, including origin traceability, cross-border traceability, full process traceability, and much, much more. The immutable data on the blockchain enables companies to increase the efficiency of compliance review, government supervision, logistics, and supplier evaluation. Walmart in China is currently leveraging VeChain to trace product information to their consumers. So now when you buy something from any website, <laughs> now when you buy something from any, uh, <laughs> stop it, man. Now, when you buy something from any website or store, you, you know when it's coming from and what kind of uh, ringer it went through. So let's move on to automobiles. VeChain assigns each vehicle a unique VeChain ID and a digital passport that covers the entire life cycle of the car. The car brand can access the quality and authenticity of auto parts. Additionally, Access to that data can be shared by the vehicle owner to different third-party service providers such as for car insurance, used car trading, auto finance, and et cetera. This is, like, this is huge. You want to touch on anything on, on this part, Robin? Crickets. Automobile <laughs> manufacturers are able to manage the entire life cycle of key components, keep track of vehicles, condition based on the data collected, acquire damage information and replacement records, feed data to the brand's research and development team to improve vehicle designs and facilitate recall operations in a timely fashion. Guys, you can look just like Carfax, right? Mm -hmm. You can literally use the ID that VeChain has provided right. for each separate car. And you can see, has it been any accidents? Has a title been messed with? Has a mileage been messed with? When was the last time it got a new check? When was the last time it got their brakes replaced? Also, if there's a recall, you don't have to hope to find the information on the on Question. online. Question. Hold on. Don't interrupt me. Mm. Hold on. You can also get immediately notified if it's your exact specific model car, if there's a recall, if not, you can send it, whatever the case may be. But one of the most important things is if you're BMW and you're using this feature VeChain is offering, your research and development team will have access to information that they would never have access to to be able to improve vehicle design and do all the amazing stuff. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Okay. Useless What's dude. your vehicle uh, record looking like? How many accidents have you been in, my dude? Zero. 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 Yeah, you don't are you an lie accident. To me. Come you on, are a walking accident. Come on, bro. Yeah. You don't know me like that. Yeah, I do. All right, let's like move that. on to retail. Now, how does it work with retail and VeChain? What do they plan on doing? Step one, high value products are embedded with RFID or NFC chips or tagged with QR codes during production and allocated a unique VeChain ID to keep track of the product's entire life cycle and record core data. Step two, the data of each stage is verified by a third party and uploaded and stored on the blockchain. Step three, consumers can scan the chips or QR codes through the VeChain Pro app and in turn, trace and verify the products, increasing their confidence in the product that they're buying. They can also interact with other sellers or consumers through the app so they can say, hey, I just bought this computer. Mine is acting up. Is yours doing the same thing? No, it's not. Yes, it is. Okay, let me send it back and get my money back. Step four. When or if a product is returned, the seller can scan the chip or QR code to obtain the product sales information and complete the returning process swiftly. You can literally use the app, scan the code, send it back. You will automatically get paid back the money in your account. No waiting period, no nothing. So question. I, I, now, I typically, when I have something broke in my house, uh, whether it be a product or whatever it is. You broke it. Uh, I tend to buy a new one from Amazon, and then when I receive it, I put the old one that's broke back in the box and I send it back. With VeChain, does it protect from that? 
Can I still run my, my scandalous ways of, of replacing my items? Question. David? <laughs> I don't even want to answer that question. First of all, why would you admit guilt on live camera? Second of all, no, you can't do that because everything is traced and backlogged. Literally, the blockchain is immutable. You cannot change it. And essentially, that's, where you, that's what's happening with the VeChain and the QR codes that they're putting on there. Now, sticking to retail, arguably the biggest benefit is that brands can interact easily with their customers and achieve precise marketing through the user image generated from the immutable data on the VeChain Thor blockchain. We talk about how marketing is so important. The amount of money they spent, companies spent on marketing to market their products and solutions. Now you can specifically target the type of customers you want and use the information that's stored on the blockchain with the VeChain protocol. The last piece of their protocol that they're, they're okay. So there is so many use cases that if I were to do all of them and break them down, it would be a four hour long video. So what I did instead, I picked the top three or four that I feel like are the most important and the ones that you can relate to most. The others, I actually dropped a link to the VeChain website in the description of this video. If you want to check out the rest of the uh, protocols and things they're offering, feel free to click that link, go to their website and look for yourself. The last one I'm going to talk about is digital content distribution. Important data such as the data related to copyright registration, content distribution, and copyright transactions can be stored on the blockchain, thus making intellectual property traceable. So if you want to launch something and you're not sure if there's a patent on it or if there's a copyright or a trademark, you can search the database and immediately right then and there, you can get your answer and see if you can make the product or whatever the case may be without copyright infringement. Content creators create content on the blockchain-based digital content distribution platform. Say that 10 times fast. Then they submit a request for publication and then they register the VeChain Thor blockchain to achieve traceability for intellectual property. So now you also don't have to worry if it's your copyright, if it's your patent, you don't have to worry about people infringing on it. And if they do, it immediately gets shut down without having to pay for lawyers. The digital content distribution also aims to reduce the involvement of third parties and achieve peer-to-peer -peer distribution so that content circulation and transactions can be faster and more transparent. The most unique aspect of this service is a digital content distribution platform is able to provide data analysis platforms with authentic and reliable data to analyze readers' interests and hobbies. So you can send customized content to readers based on the reading history the platform is also able to analyze data based on the learning behaviors. Peer-to-peer, -peer, so it eliminates the middleman. That's the basics of everything I just said. Let's move on to some partnerships. Very important to the success of any project. It's got some huge names that are partnered with VeChain. You might have heard of BMW, Trusted Food, Walmart, Bayer, like Bayer Aspirin, and of course, Grant, Grant Thornton. Let's get into tokenomics and markets. Now, VeChain is unique and it has two tokens. It has a native token VET, V-E-T, which is used to transact on their blockchain. There's also VThor, which is the fuel token that fuels the ecosystem. It's used mainly and only for transaction fees. Um, this ensures businesses can be more certain of their operating costs rather than being subject to the whims of speculators and excess market volatility. So <clears throat> when you have a native token, people either buy it to use it on your platform or they buy it to speculate on price and make money. When you separate it and you have one just for transactions and one just for using it on the blockchain and for speculating, you can isolate and see the data and the facts how much money is being spent on our transaction fees? You can do that with a VThor token. Uh, and the cool thing too, each VeChain token, the VET token, generates a fixed amount of VThor tokens over time, which can be used to pay for transaction fees. Uh, so you would need to essentially hold 2,300 VET tokens to earn one VThor token chain every single day. With that being said, let's send it over to ugly ass Robin. He's gonna go over price, market cap, the ranking, Chart analysis for both VThor and VChain. Take it away, Robin. Man, now that we're done, done with that boring section there. Huh. Now, this is why you tuned in. You tuned in for me because I'm going to give you what you want to know. Ain't Can nobody we, tuning in for your ugly ass. Can we make some money on it? That's what we want to know. All right, so let's, 
Let's pull up the charts here. We have a nine cent V chain or the V E T token. Wow, where is that right now on the ranking list? Top 32 or number 32 on the list. Of course, this is as of filming on December 23rd. Uh, going into the circulating supply, uh, we have 64 billion tokens in circulation with a total supply of 86 billion. Great number, not a lot of tokens that are not in circulation. We do like to see the number over 50%. This checks that box. Also for that, nice and juicy. We have $6 billion market cap. Uh, so it's got a lot of money in the project, but still has a lot of room to grow. Tons of utility. Me gusta. Going into the one month chart, we have a all time high of 13 cents. Or, excuse me, not all time high, monthly high of 13 cents, uh, with the price sitting currently at nine. We've bottomed out this month at seven cents. So I feel like if you want to get into this project in the short term, it's a good spot, dollar cost average in if you're interested, or just FOMO in if you are, whatever. Now, going into the yearly chart. We did hit all time high at 25 cents and earlier this year it was at two cents. So not too far two off cents. of the uh, lowest part of the, uh, at the early year, two cents, it's in a nine, not too far off. Uh, I do believe in the project long-term. I think it has great fundamentals. Every company in America and around the world could easily implement VeChain and their blockchain into their establishment. Let's take a look at the Liquidity, where is it available? Just about everywhere. Only thing I don't see is Coinbase, but who really cares about that? Uh, who be Goable, Binance, you largely. Who cares about Coinbase? Yeah, who cares? Anyways, you can get it anywhere. Platform. Yeah. Now, let's get into the, let's get into the gasoline. Because your boy, Yo he me encanta now, la gasolina. We got the VTOR token sitting at 0.6 of one penny. And with the circulating supply, doesn't matter because it is generated as it is needed. Now, we're going to go into the one month chart here. This is in pretty similar correlation to the VET token. So I would expect to see the same price movement from one to the other because they are directly correlated. So why am I showing you this? I don't know, but <laughs> let me, here let me, we go. Hold on, Robin, hold, on. Me, hold on. Let me finish my analysis and then we can talk about whatever else. Okay. Now the one month, the one year chart, holy crap, very eerily similar to the other one, but just to show you the chart anyways, still a good time to buy. Earlier this year, a bunch of zeros and an eight. Now we're sitting at a few zeros and a six. It's looking juicy. Once again, with liquidity, oh, what do you know? Same thing. <laughs> now, off to you, David. How you doing? <laughs> oh, shit. I was going to ask you a serious question. Um, is there any point for anyone to invest in the VTOR token or should you just invest in VET? Like, what are your thoughts? I, honestly, they're both co uh, directly correlated. Yeah. You know what? If you are the guy that buys stuff strictly off of price and doesn't care about the market cap, uh, you basically like to see the extra zeros, then go to go with the fuel token. Uh, but honestly, you're not going to win or lose in comparison to one another. Directly correlated. So have at it. You want the fuel? Get the fuel. You want the token? Get the token. Wow. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. Now, to conclude our deep dive into VeChain, my closing thoughts. VeChain was one of the most intriguing and fun projects to cover for me personally. It offers us a view into how blockchain integration with everyday services will look like in the future. There is zero doubt that moving forward, more and more companies will utilize blockchain technology and crypto to run their businesses more efficiently. VeChain has the infrastructure in place to lead the way when the movement does take off. The two token system they have in place might hurt the price of the VET token short term since the VET token is not used to pay for transaction fees. The VTOR is, but they'll make up for that in the long term with their robust use cases. I am loving VeChain and I personally hold and plan on holding the VET token for the long term future. With that being said, we are done with this deep dive. I want to say on behalf of myself, Funny Rob, and Donnie, we thank you guys for joining us. We hope you enjoy the content. Make sure you subscribe, like the video if you liked it, share it. But most importantly, come back Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for our live shows. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Hasta luego. Hey.